We often look for monsters in the dark, but sometimes the monster is the light itself. There is an object in sector LTT9779, exactly 262 light years from Earth. It is not a star, but it burns like one. We call it LTT9779b, and it is the most reflective object in the known universe. In astrophysics, we measure this using bond albedo. Earth reflects 30% of sunlight. The moon reflects only 12%. Even Venus, the brightest planet in our sky, reflects only 75%. When the test satellite first flagged this object, the data didn't make sense. The brightness curve was impossible for a planet. Astronomers assumed it was a sensor glitch. Planets are supposed to be messy, organic things that absorb light. But the European Space Agency's KEOPS mission confirmed it. This isn't a bright planet. It is a global, spherical mirror. If you floated above it, you wouldn't just see the planet. You would see the entire galaxy reflected back at you. Dr. James Jenkins described it as a burning world with heavy clouds of metals. It is a hellscape disguised as a jewel. It lures you in with beauty, but the physics underneath are terrifying. To understand why this planet fascinates astronomers, you have to look at the map. It resides in the Neptune Desert. This is a region close to a star where intermediate-sized planets, like Neptune, cannot exist. The scientific mechanism is called photoevaporation. Usually, when a gas giant gets this close to a star, the X-ray and UV radiation boil the atmosphere away. The gravity isn't strong enough to hold the air, and the star strips the planet to the bone. Statistically, finding LTT9779b is like walking into the center of a nuclear blast and finding a snowman that hasn't melted. It orbits its star every 19 hours. That is its entire year. It is standing in a cosmic flamethrower, so close that the tidal forces should be tearing it apart. By all the laws of planetary formation, it should be dead. The temperature here is over 2,000 degrees Celsius. That is hotter than molten stainless steel. At these temperatures, molecules usually suffer thermal dissociation. They break apart. Water cannot exist here. Life as we know it cannot exist here. But the answer is in the clouds. The atmosphere is saturated with silicate and titanate vapors. The day side is too hot for water clouds, but it is the perfect temperature for metal clouds. Think of a bathroom after a hot shower. The air gets heavy with steam and condenses on the mirror. On LTT 9779b, the air is saturated with vaporized glass and metal. When these vapors rise and cool, they don't form mist. They form droplets of liquid titanium. This creates specular reflection. Earth clouds are rough, so they scatter light, making them look white. But these clouds are heavy and smooth. They act like a polished shield, reflecting the starlight perfectly. It is literally raining molten glass and titanium, a storm of liquid armor. These clouds reflect the star's heat back into space, preventing the planet from boiling away. It survives by wearing a mirror suit. If you tried to fly a probe into this atmosphere, it wouldn't just melt, it would be plated. The titanium rain would coat the hull in seconds before the pressure crushed it into a diamond. This is planetary warfare against a star, and the planet is winning. Now, let's address the theory flooding our secure channels. Viewers have asked, if this planet is a giant mirror, what happens if we look at it? Can we see Earth in the reflection? We assume vision is instant. You open your eyes and the world is just there. But light has a strict speed limit. It crawls across the cosmos at exactly 299,792 kilometers per second. When you look at the moon, you see it 1.3 seconds ago. The sun, eight minutes ago. This mirror planet is 262 light years away. That distance isn't just space, it is a chronological barrier. The light hitting that surface right now left Earth before the steam engine was invented. To look at it is to look through a tunnel of time. The physics is sound, but you wouldn't see today. Light takes 262 years to travel there, hits the mirror, and takes 262 years to come back. That is a round trip of 524 years. 
This creates a phenomenon called a light echo. If we had a telescope powerful enough to resolve the reflection, we wouldn't see ourselves. We would see the height of the Aztec Empire. We would see Leonardo da Vinci mixing paint. We would see the fires of the Renaissance burning in the dark. We would see a world without electricity. Nothing in the universe is ever truly lost. It is just traveling. LTT 9779B is a time machine made of clouds. It has been watching us for millions of years, reflecting our own history back at us. But the mirror isn't the only anomaly, it's the location. Gas giants like this are born in the cold, deep freeze of the outer system. To get here, it had to migrate. For millions of years, it fell inward, dragged by the star's gravity. It plowed through the solar system like a cosmic wrecking ball, eating everything in its path. It was in a free fall toward destruction. Usually this story ends one way. The star eats the planet, or the planet hits the Roche limit, the invisible line where the star's gravity becomes stronger than the planet's own gravity, tearing it into a ring of dust. This planet didn't die. It slammed on the brakes right at the edge of the abyss. It parked itself in a stable orbit mere inches, cosmically speaking, from total annihilation. It is balancing on a razor's edge. In physics, we call this the stopping problem. What force counteracted the gravity of a star? It is sitting in a gravity well that should have swallowed it whole. It's too stable. It's too precise. Of course, there is one final possibility. A planet that coats itself in metal to survive a death zone acts suspiciously like a biological defense mechanism or a technological one. We are currently analyzing the spectral data for technosignatures, signs that the titanium in the atmosphere is not natural, but industrial pollution. We are checking to see if the mirror was built. Is it a natural anomaly? Or is it a shield hiding something underneath? We don't know yet, but the James Webb Telescope is looking. In astrophysics, coincidence is just a word we use when we're too afraid to say design. It resides in a forbidden desert. It survives a kill zone. It stopped its migration at the precise inch required to survive. Nature is a chaotic agent. Nature is messy. LTT 9779B is perfect. And in a chaotic universe, perfection is the most terrifying signal of all. Sí, esta es la, la idea que tenemos ahora de este planeta, porque este planeta que realmente descubrimos con, con nuestro equipo tres años antes, es un planeta muy especial, muy raro en realidad, porque existe en una región donde no hay muchos planetas. Es una región que se llama el desierto de Neptuno. Planetas como Neptuno que están ubicadas muy cerca de sus estrellas, que sus temperaturas son de como 2000 grados. Significa que la radiación de las estrellas pueden soplar, pueden destruir las atmósferas. Pero este planeta, LTT 9779b, por razones que estamos tratando de entender, todavía tiene una atmósfera.